One. <laughs> two. <laughs> How many trucks will there be? You might find out, and I don't know about that, with Jim Jeffries. <laughs> that one was for Kelly. <laughs> I can't I'm so glad in, I was not drinking. I can't look him in the eye. <laughs> there he is. I wasn't listening. He just started counting off the Amazon truck. Oh, the Amazon truck. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the spreadsheet on your computer? Uh, uh, no, I, I don't have it. I gave it to the village. Uh, the people that don't Village of Outwater. Village of Outwater. It's an in joke that Forrest parks his no, car. That's not an end if you listen to the Patreon. Yeah, if you, yeah, listen, you listen to the Patreon, to the Patreon. You can hear the Forrest parks his car and he counts Amazon trucks to complain. <laughs> not anymore. That they're going down residential streets. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. I'm putting that down as two. <laughs> uh, Fuck, that was good. Thank you for that. Did you did you ever inflate the numbers ever so slightly to get your point across? No, no, no. I was a scientist. I don't. I don't. How I don't many? Inflate, how many do you think it was in a certain time period? Well, you guys were talking over me when I was explaining it, but sure. The way that you do it is you you, you do total number of vehicles. In total, right. Then you look at total number of commercial vehicles. Then you right. take the total number of Amazon vehicles divided by the commercial vehicles, and it, of all the commercial vehicles, sixty five percent of the vehicles were <laughs> Amazon vehicles. Oh wow! Yeah, you didn't get in the microphone good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a voice note from Jim yesterday. Yeah. That's a lot of vehicles going. Yeah, we, through we, that. we were teasing. Uh, we were teasing first on group text, which, uh, by the way, group text. That's what it's useful for. Yeah, roasting. Yeah, yeah. Ganging, up, ganging on up on one friend <laughs> in a group of friends. Nothing does it better than group text. Even if you do it in a room, it's not good because in a room you can see the pain in their eyes and you might stop. <laughs> but, 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 but not in group text. You keep going. We have a friend, Jason Joe White, and he's mm-hmm. wonderful to roast on group text. <laughs> I know, but he he gets up. He gets up. So I think I read that text. Come one time. on, guys. <laughs> I, I think I read that text one time. It was me. Jason, Brian, Brian Olson, and Matt Kirshen. Yeah, yeah. And he was he just asked a simple question about when does the party start? It was at it was at Scott, <laughs> oh, yeah. it was at Scott's house. I Kelly's remember brother. that. And it was at when does the party start? And we <laughs> didn't give him a straight answer. And it's, I have it saved somewhere. It's one of my favorite bits of of group text ever. I can search for it. You guys like we've been here for an hour. Have I read this ever? We're in suits. No, I don't know this. <laughs> have I never read this? I don't know if I still have it. Uh, uh, I'll have to see if I have it saved. Let me, so let me search for it. Well, we can put a time cut here where you look for it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, or while on. we're waiting, our friend of the podcast, Nick Vial, uh, our bachelor expert, his oh. book came out October 4th. Don't, uh, don't text your ex happy birthday. So it's like dating love advice. Oh, but that's a, that's, there's never been a truer sentence than that one. <laughs> yeah. That's the sneaky text that you get from yeah. the ex where it's just mm-hmm. like, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. And you're just like, why? Why? why did you do that? Yeah. And they're like, what? I was just trying to be nice. All I did was wish you a happy birthday. And I remembered it. I'm just, you know. Yeah. Me, me, me. Last year, my text, uh, my ex texted me the night before my birthday. I was like, you just ruined my whole fucking birthday. Um, but e- this isn't just necessarily for dating. If you're a human dealing with other humans in this world, there's a lot of good shit in here. It's very well written. It's good about setting boundaries, doing all that stuff. Talks about fuck boys, fuck girls, Ooh. all that good stuff. So you can go get that now. It's a bestseller already. Hell Did yeah. you find it's it first? Uh, yeah, keep keep talking. I know I have it somewhere. Right. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten rid of this thing. It's it's gold. Maybe I did. It's it's a kind of a long one. Maybe we should read it on Patreon. It, yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah, a Patreon yeah. exclusive. Oh, this is, yeah, I'll do it on Patreon. Yeah, yeah. go right. pay to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's worth the money. It is Honestly, it's it is very, very funny. Long. I forgot we were on the page. We, we can all pick uh, roles that will be. Oh yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, we'll do we a get, live reading. You can read it out. You can pay you. Yeah. Okay. yeah oh, you, no, can, you can't do an impersonation. You're very good. Uh, I'll Jim, do you. Jim does for us. I'm not good at my own self. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. you can you can do Whitehead. <laughs> he's a he's a funny impersonation to do. I want to. You can always that. tell when his feelings are hurt, though. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta find. That. I might not have it on here, but I'll when you, when you, when I'll you play poker with him, he's fantastic. He's he's, he's got a big tell. <laughs> he just tells you when he's upset with the, the bet. Why did you bet so high? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he tells he tells you he's upset. <laughs> uh, I don't have it. Oh uh, uh, man, <laughs> my cards are good, but they're not that good. <laughs> you must have something really good. 
I guess I'll raise. <laughs> Gotta um, love JJ. <laughs> how uh, how are you? How was the show in Nashville? Uh, it was good. The doohickeys lit up the place. It was hard to go in after them because mm. uh, yeah. there was a lot of anger in the room. You, and you <laughs> sold like thousands of dollars worth of merch, huh? That's right. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. Retired. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you got some shows coming up in Canada here, October 20th. Kelowna, Canada, Prospero. Kelowna, that's going to sell out that one. Right. Going to sell out that one. October 21st and 22nd, Vancouver. Vancouver, uh, that'll sell out as well. There's one show sold out and the other show is on its way. So there's two shows in Vancouver. What about October 27th in Columbus, Ohio? Uh, Columbus, plenty of tickets. Plenty of tickets. <laughs> Bring your friends. High ticket alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. High ticket alert. Uh, get, these, get these tickets at your own leisure. <laughs> Come on, Columbus. Yeah, you were able to get tickets the day after the gig. Yeah. <laughs> I'll still be there. Uh, and then October 28th, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, we added a show. Oh, I see that on there. There's another yeah, show Yeah, we added a show. So okay, so Pittsburgh. You- and these were delayed shows because of COVID. So a lot of people after because they couldn't come to the show or whatever, we had to delay the shows and so they rescheduled, you know, 10 months later or what have you. And um, a lot of people got refunds and stuff like that, mostly in the Columbus area from the sun. Mm-hmm. If you come to the show in Columbus, hey, this is the good news. If you'll get to spread out, oh, <laughs> yeah, you'll have a seat next to you. You'll have a seat next to you for your popcorn. <laughs> I don't know what I did wrong last time in Columbus, but it's murder, the ticket sales in Columbus. But Pittsburgh, we've added another show. So the people of Pittsburgh, I must be doing all right by you, go Steelers. <laughs> Pittsburgh's a fun town. Yeah, it is uh, a fun town, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, there's your those are your upcoming shows. And then uh, as we just mentioned, we just did a Patreon teaser. Yeah. So if you want to hear the texts and hear about me counting Amazon cars, <laughs> all these fun stories. <laughs> yeah, patreon.com slash IDCat and then follow us on Instagram at IDCat Podcast. I wanted to get to the stage that when Forrest people go to Forrest gigs, their heckle is one. <laughs> <laughs> Please come out and heckle me. My yeah. ball time. So yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a good heckle because like each time you try to have a comeback, Tow! <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Well, it's, I think it's out there now. I've stopped them now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't. Nothing, nothing yeah, I'll be very, just made sure of it. I'll, be, it's gonna happen. I'll <laughs> be very disappointed in you if you do that. <laughs> and if you do it, make sure you record it so I can really tell you off. <laughs> and give me your Venmo. I'll send you some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Aren't eating roaches again? Get over. Get up here. Stop eating roaches. Come on, chill, dog. Yeah. Thanks I'm for fighting them, Marty. Yeah, he's eating the day on his face. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cute dog. Four, four roaches. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's it for now. Oh, I have a podcast, the Merman Podcast. Listen oh, hey. To it with Dave Williamson. Mm. You, if you want to, you don't have to. Jack and I have a podcast uh, called uh, The Unsolicited Podcast. Hey, for oh, you plugged it on here? No, I don't hey, think so. Hey, hey, wow. Hey, 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 yeah, we do that. Hey, and Jim's first. been on it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, first, uh, how many episodes have you recorded? Uh, One. <laughs> Two. Seven. 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 (laughs) Six. Uh, (laughs) All right. Let's uh, do some ads. Uh, Money can't buy you happiness, but not worrying about money comes close. That's where Chime can help you smile more. They were just named the number one most loved banking app. Number one. Number one. With Payday up to two days early, and fee-free overdrafts up to $200, they offer financial peace of mind in your wallet. All this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit cards to apply. Credit checks checks to apply, even better. (laughs) See yourself with Chime is so loved. See, see, (laughs) See for yourself. Why Chime is so loved at Chime.com slash IDK. That's Chime.com slash IDK. Chime is a financial technical. Yeah, this you have to Chime, read this. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank or Bank or Stride Bank and members at FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds. Funds depends on payers. Stop the eligibility requirements and overdraft limits. Apply to Chime.com slash Stop Me. Chime was the 2021 number one most downloaded banking app in the U.S. according to Aptopia. That was hard. He was Boo. chewing on my finger. Uh, people underestimate how important a good night's sleep is. Even just one night of lousy sleep can have a ripple effect on the rest of your week. If you're struggling to get a good night's rest or just want to wake up more refreshed, check out the Sleep CBD Solutions at Next Evo Naturals. They have two great sleep products, triple action sleep capsules that and sleep support CBD complex gummies 
both designed to help you get the rest you need to wake up feeling refreshed. I look, I struggle with sleep. I have this uh, baby mm-hmm. and pain in the neck. Mm-hmm. Don't get them. <laughs> but I got one now, so I love it and all that type of stuff. And I have to take care of it, which means having to wake up early in the morning. And this product has actually helped me go to sleep. Yeah, these are science backed products. Oh, so they're I'm better than the others. Xanax CBD and ones. all the, the habit training things and mm-hmm. all that type of stuff. Not this stuff. CBD. Nevo X Sleep CBD uh, Solutions. Next Evos. Ne- next Evos. <laughs> CBD solutions help you get more refreshing sleep naturally. Their premium THC-free CBD features smart sorb technology with four times better absorption than natural CBD. Normal That's nice. CBD. Oh, a normal CBD. <laughs> oh, it is natural. Triple action sleep capsules are formulated with slow release and fast acting menitolin uh, that are clinically shown to support quality rest and relaxation. Or try the delicious strawberry flavored sleep support CBD complex gummies with fast acting melatonin that helps you fall asleep quickly. Not all CBD is created equal. With most CBD products, it's a mystery if you're even getting on what's on the label. Like yep. a bloody Agatha Christie novel, you read those fucking things. Next Evo's precision formulations are packed by more scientific studies than any other CBD brand. Developed by scientists and supported by rigorous laboratory testing, Next Evo delivers. Next Evo. Yeah, Next Evo. Next, Next Evo. Next Evo delivers proven results. Vegan, non GMO, and THC free using 100% US grown hemp. Call to action. Get a better night's rest <laughs> with Sleep CBD Solutions from Next Evo's Naturals for up to what What the? I've read some things in me day, but nothing's been as shocking as this. For up to 25% off, not on, off yeah. subscription you don't have to pay orders. more with this code. It's great. Of $50 or more, use promo code IDK at nextevo.com. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O.com, promo code IDK to get 25% off subscription orders. All right. Please welcome our guest, Jen Thumb. G'day, Jen. How are you? Hi. Now, I'm well. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. But now it's time to play. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Judging by its cover. All right. Uh, Jen, I have to guess what Jen's doing. She's uh, in seems like a, a, a this top story of her house. Um, I can tell by the the beams. There's a bed there. Uh, there's not very undescript. Um, okay, Jen, do you work in the education department? This is very close, actually. Yeah. All right, you're an educator. Um, <laughs> do you work with? Uh, Small children? Uh, very occasionally. What about sometimes. large children? You know, no, but I mean children. like, like <laughs> pri- primary school kids yeah. versus college uh, sometimes, kids. Sometimes, sometimes. It's a, a part of my job is to work as an educator. Can you get a degree in the subject we're about to talk about? Yes, you can. All right. So is it philosophy? No. Oh, okay, because I've never understood that degree. <laughs> Me neither. If it's, if it's not written on the paper, does it even exist? <laughs> um, <guess> not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming uh, you have a degree in this subject, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Does it involve the human body? Uh, sometimes it does, yeah. Okay. So but only like, sometimes. Feels like it's very broad. This That'll subject. throw you off. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's specific. It's broad within the specificity. Does that help you? I didn't know what an idiom idiom was. Idiom? Idiom Idiom was. I was on the Wheel of Fortune. I just guessed. (laughs) Uh, Crikey. Uh, (laughs) uh, Old. Think old. Oh. Oh. uh, Do you specialize in elders care? (laughs) No. History. History. Is it history? What a topic. That's getting closer. Getting closer. Yeah. It's a subject that, that everybody learns at some point in elementary school. It's usually like third grade. It's yeah, one of my favorite topics. People are interested in it. Oh, is it the California gold rush? 
Yeah. No, we should do an episode on that. Yeah, yeah, but Kelly's <laughs> always talking about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. The gold not, rush. It can't shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> so much of a gold. Yeah. You is, know, it, is it the Constitution? We, we were talking. No. We were talking about <laughs> last night Halloween Horror Nights. Is it Halloween? We did on Halloween. We're not doing Halloween. It's not Halloween Horror Why Nights. Why would we do that again? But within Halloween Horror Nights, it's something we always do there. There's some characters. There's a ride that we always go on. Oh. Is it a roll? We roller coasters. No. What do you yeah, mean? That would, be, that would be really yeah, cool. Is She's a roller ride. coaster yeah, educator. Is it a roller coaster? <laughs> She's in yeah, Jurassic World. Oh, yeah. Actually, is it the uh, Jurassic Park? Is it the mummy? Yeah, there you is go. It, is it the Transformers ride? <laughs> the, the, the mummy The mummy was are getting doing, closer. The mummy doing, was the approved hit. So it's the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> mummy, mummy. The mummy ride. Okay. Ancient Egypt. That's what okay, we're talking about. Okay, the mummy. About. People like the mummies, do they? Ancient Egypt is what we're talking about. Today. I know a little bit about this. I've watched uh, Ancient Aliens several episodes <laughs> as I've passed asleep oh, and been high. So <laughs> I've, got, I've got all the facts. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Dr. Jen Thum is an Egyptologist yep, yep, and a yep. museum educator. She works at the Harvard Art Museums, uh, where she teaches with objects across the collection. She is one of the curators of an exhibition on view right now about funerary portraits from Roman Egypt and the science behind how they were made. She is also currently working on an exhibition called Seeing in Art and Medicine and also working on a kid-friendly translation of an ancient Egyptian story about why being a scribe was better than any other job in ancient Egypt. Uh, you can check out the activity book she wrote for kids called Coloring Ancient Egypt and the Harvard Art Museums at the website, harvardartmuseums.org. Thanks for being here, Jen. Uh, do you want to tell us just a little bit about how you got to be an Egyptologist? Oh, sure. And I should say that the Seeing Art and Medicine exhibition is different from the kid-friendly translation oh, okay. of the Egyptian story. <laughs> good note, good note. <laughs> that would be interesting, though. Um, yeah, how did I become an Egyptologist? Um, I was interested in archaeology. And then when I applied to grad school, I got funding for an Egyptology degree. So I became an Egyptologist. Ah. Have you met any? Have you met anyone who's even close to Indiana Jones? Has there been a guy that you've been on an archaeology thing and you've gone, that's the fella? I have to say there are there's always someone on a dig who is wearing like a leather fedora. Yeah. Always. This is the thing about fedoras. That's as close like, as you get. If <laughs> if you see a man in the Indiana Jones outfit, he is the biggest nerd in the world. If you're at the airport, <laughs> there's a guy with a leather jacket and a fedora, you're like, nerd. Right? Yeah. Except Harrison Ford, who looks money in that outfit. Yep. That's the most handsome man in the world in that outfit. Everyone else, no. Not, not everyone can pull it off. No, it's very hard to pull off that yep. outfit. Yep. Uh, something else worth noting, I found Jen on that Skype a Scientist website. So um, we've talked about it a lot, but Skypeascientist.com, you guys can schedule um, schedule talks with, with people who are experts in a bunch of different fields. Or they just listen to this and get a few yeah. bits of facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask Jim some questions about ancient Egypt. And uh, at the end of these, his answers, you're going to grade him on his accuracy. Uh, Jen, zero through 10, 10 being the best. Kai's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on, on et cetera. And we'll add those all together. 21 through 30, Brendan Fraser, Jim. Yeah, he's back, man. Yeah. Playing a fat guy in a movie. 11 through 20. He got screwed over in the Me Too movement, man. He was Me Too. No one listened to him. I feel sorry for Brendan Fraser. And then he had no, to pay too much. He had to pay too much. child. He had a female executive who really screwed him. Then he had to pay too much child support and he went completely broke. And now he's paying like a fat guy in a film. It's good to have Brendan back is what I'm saying. <laughs> so try and do well and then you'll be Brendan Fraser. Yeah, from Encino oh. Man. That's your reference you're making, right? Yes, definitely. That's or very the mummy. Or the mummy. Encino Man. Okay. <laughs> uh, 11 through 20, you're Fraser Crane. Um, that's not bad either. That's pretty good. It's yeah, pretty good. But not for ancient Egypt. It's not good. Oh. Zero through 10, just crane the bird. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't want that one. <laughs> Although that might be closer to Egypt than Fraser Crane. So. Yeah. Well, anyways. All right. What was <laughs> the ancient Egyptian name for Egypt? The ancient Egyptian name for Egypt. Correct. Well, they just called it Egypt. They didn't call it ancient Egypt. <laughs> because <laughs> it, back in the day, they were just like fucking they Egypt. They just called it current Egypt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. New Egypt. <laughs> yeah, it would have been, you would have had the Sphinx and you had the pyramids and all that type of stuff. And then there was fucking... Moses and all that I shit. I didn't ask about that. I no, said, I'm just trying to get the name. I'm okay. trying to think about <laughs> yeah. think about what happened back then. We would have had something to do with cats. I would call it Catland. Catland, yeah. <laughs> Catland do? No, no, that's another different place. Okay. 
That's just next ca- door. Just cat land. Okay. How many pyramids are there in Egypt? Oh, there's loads of pyramids, but the the Great Pyramids. No, just total. Pyramids. How many? How many pyramids? Oh, fuck me. There's there's some outside of Egypt. You know, there's so there's little tiny ones. The I great, didn't know this. I thought there was just like four, like the ones you see all the time. Yeah, yeah, there. three or four. The, no, how many? How many there in total in Egypt? Then forty. Forty. Okay. What does the word pharaoh mean? Uh, far, pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh, that would mean king. Okay. How many pharaohs were there? Um, well, several because they, you know, there was King Tut. He was just a king though. They didn't call him Pharaoh Tut. Yeah. Uh, so, Mia. Who? Mia. Yeah, Mia. Mia Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh, Mia Pharaoh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Ronan. Hur- Hurricane <laughs> Ian Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say there was fucking 27 pharaohs. Okay. Um, how old was King Tut when he became Pharaoh? Well, he was one of them, wasn't he? Um, <laughs> uh, King Tut, I think he was in his early 20s, let's say 22. Okay. Around 1200 BC, there, were a, there was a plot to assassinate the pharaoh Ramses III. Mm. Which family member plotted to kill him? Ramses II. I don't know. That would have been the pharaoh before. Yeah. I'm going to say Ramses V. Ramses V. He, right, he right, was right. in line, you see. The month of August is the eighth month of the year due to which pharaoh? Uh, Octavia. Okay. The Egyptians believed that when you died, you had to pass a sort of test to get into the afterlife. They weighed one of your body parts on a scale to determine if you'd get in. Which body part was it? Your skull. Okay. If you didn't get into the afterlife, a monster that was part hippo, part lion, and part crocodile oh, would geez. do what to you? Yeah. Rape you, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm trying to think of what's the worst type of thing. Like, you're not going to murder you or something. So, what's the next crime down? I'm not saying that to be gratuitous, but mm. there'll be some, he'll violate you in a terrible way. Make small talk for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Nice weather out today, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe. Locust? Yeah. Maybe really nice he weather. just sits off to the side and plays Barry Manilow songs all day. Yeah, okay. What are the two most common food items Egyptians hope to have in the afterlife? Uh, the two most common that they hope to have when they're in the afterlife, yeah. In the fair, uh, I'll say sugar mm-hmm. and um, uh, bread. Yeah, we just did an episode on that. Remember, he was yeah. talking about the Egyptian bread. All right, ancient Egyptians had cures for ailments. For a head wound, what would they put on the patient's skull? Um, uh, what, what into the wound? Yeah, like what would they put on him? Like for to. For the wound, you had to help cure. Well, you got yeah, to you got to think. Okay, so what was I? Uh, so so the mummification, all that type of stuff. They used to put ointments and stuff like that. So they had different ointments. So you got to think. Okay, so the Aboriginals used papaya, uh, pawpaw on things. So you got to think, what's the local fruit or something that you could rub the skin of or whatever? I don't know what grows in Egypt, so this would be a complete um, a pig skin. Okay. Ancient Egyptians are sometimes shown with beards. Straight beards and curved beards mean two different things. If you have a curved beard, it means that you are blank. Woo-woo. <laughs> okay. You, you, you'd be like this. You know him. Fucking curved beard, that one. <laughs> okay. Him, him and his curly beard friends, uh, they're always going out looking for women. They never seem to find any. <laughs> All right. M- meow is the ancient Egyptian word for what? Meow. Okay. Yeah, because they love cats, man. All right. I'll say the average cat then. All right. Cat. I think you got that one right. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Where does the word yeah. Where does the word mummy come from? Uh, uh, posh British kids calling their parents. <laughs> <laughs> mummy. Yeah. Mummy. So my do- my wife sounds my daughter. I would say. Um, <laughs> then my wife sounds. She says mummy. Yeah. And is that your only answer? Yeah, I think it's from pub- private schools in Britain. <laughs> No, okay, so mummy, <laughs> okay. it can't be from mummies and mummification. So I'll say it's from the mummification. But I'll say it's from a medical term. It's, it's how to preserve a body is where we get the term mummy from. Okay, and what is, quote, mummy brown? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tarantino film, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ma- mummy, mummy brown. Oh, that's the, the color you turn after you die. It's like the, the hue of the skin. All right. In addition to the deceased loved ones, what else did Egyptians mummify? Uh, cats, uh, pets, 
Um, so I'll say mostly cats they used to mummify. Okay. And then they, they sometimes would take, I believe, I can't remember if I'm correctly right, they would take uh, servants into the afterlife with them. So if I was to die, I, if I was the pharaoh, I'd go, and when I, my last wish would be like, make sure you, you kill Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to need him in the afterlife. Got a lot of appointments yeah, in the I'm, afterlife. I, I, don't, I don't know what my diary looks like. <laughs> On which parts of their bodies did some ancient Egyptian women have tattoos? On which parts? Yeah. Oh, a tramp stamp. Right above the thing. <laughs> oh, God. And that's always a picture of the Sphinx. Every time. You know what time, you know she's up for it. Eh? Uh, you yeah. see where she's got the picture of the Sphinx. And then they would have uh they'd have that symbol that's like the hoop that goes over like that, the stick through it, which you sometimes still see on people's arms. It's like a it's like a cane with like a stick through it, you know? Yeah. And then it would be because I, I always like the Egyptian uh, – it was never a good language, let's be honest. Whatever they were writing, it wasn't top-notch. <laughs> like whoever gets a sentence out of pointy guy, pointy guy, pyramid, 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 bird, 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 cat, bird, bird, it's bird, It's just cat. early day emojis. Pyramid. Yeah, but it's hard to read that. Yeah. I can't read emoji sentences, can I? Man? <laughs> so what, what does the word hieroglyphs mean? Uh, hyro, hydro, hydra, hyro. Good. Yeah, I know. No, I'm working okay, back okay, through okay. the words from the Latin high, uh, glyphic mm. from the word uh, graphic. Yep. So, mm. so the high, the high graphics, uh, graphics of greetings, <laughs> um, <laughs> messages of hello. <laughs> Which way do you read hieroglyphs? Left back, to right or right to left? Backwards, the other way. Right to left? Right to left. Okay. Do you know how they work? Like, uh, Very hard. They built the pyramids. Okay. Um, we have some to show, Jim, right? Yeah, Jack, you, you have the... Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to show you some hieroglyphs, see if you know what they mean. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I know this. I think you'll get them all. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, and we also have some objects to show, right? Yep. Okay. We're doing objects first because those were, I think those are... I think whatever order it comes out in here. Yeah, okay. yeah. We'll start. We can start there. Right. This is this is an object. It's it's a it's a. For you guys listening, it's a sculpture. I don't know. It's like a sculpture with a it's like guy the, on it. It's like the Rosetta Stone. Almost, yeah, there's like. Do you something. know what this is for? It's green, greenish jade, jadeish color. Um, greenish jadeish color. This is, I would say, a. What is it for? Um, a tombstone. It's used for a tombstone. Yeah. Okay. Next one, Jack. There. That's an ancient. It's a, what is this used for? A cocktail shaker. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like a jar kind of thing. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. and then one more here. What does this do? This is like a kind of a mummy sort of. Uh, that is no, that's just something nice to put on your fireplace. Uh, it's good for the husband, but the wife could use it back in the day for other reasons. Okay, <laughs> and here's a higher... fun for the whole family. That's what that's for. Here's here's Jack, a I, I sent you an email of the outline with the hieroglyphs. Uh, okay. There, we, there go. we go at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So the first one is TV. Like, it's like a rectangle, but with the bottom piece missing out of the rect the center bottom piece missing out of the rectangle. Yeah, that'd be uh building. Building. Okay. And the other one, the next one looks sort of like a bench. A, a bed <laughs> or it's a bench. bench. Okay. Build, building bi next building one is kind bench. of like a like kind of like a trapezoid. Um it's, it's like one. Well, yeah, yeah, it's like uh exercise ball. Exercise right. ball. Yeah. Next one is like an upside down rocket. Um, that's a womb. Womb. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number five. I don't know. There's like a cross on top of a cross with a circle below it. Uh, yeah. that means top of a hill. Okay. And then number six. Duck. Duck. duck? I was gonna say a bunny. Duck. A duck. Okay. Number a seven. Duck or duck. Duck. D u c k. D u c k. Number seven. Uh, what oh, and there's like a little box with it's a like thing. a Swiss Army knife. It but. comes, yeah, it is a Swiss Army knife. Uh, no, but it would be what one of the more generic ones. Uh, they call them uh, Leatherman. Le Leatherman. The Leatherman. Leatherman. Yeah. Okay. With these three. Okay. Great. I think you got all the hieroglyphs. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> I can't read English, man. <laughs> Jen, how did Jim do on his knowledge of ancient Egypt? Zero through ten. Ten's the best. I think he was really good in a lot of questions. I'll give him like a solid. Seven. All right. Which questions was he good at? Well, he had was he had like a lot of mm. uh general knowledge where yeah. if it was a guess for a number, he knew it was like a big number. And so like I can't mm. fault him for not getting yeah. the number right. And he got a couple of questions mm. exactly right. And there was a lot of like good deductions. I know you work with a lot of small children, so you can't hurt their feelings <laughs> normally, but 
<laughs> Sometimes our guests don't provide us the answers ahead of them, but you did, and I was reading the answers, and I think you were very generous with that. But that's okay. <laughs> okay, well, that, so that's why we can saying. we can have like a parent teacher conference. Yeah, and yeah. Figure yeah. That if okay. you want to change the grade, yeah. okay. Catland first answer what was the first answer. Okay, I would. Uh, so seven. It's not bad <laughs> though. They would. They love cats. Yeah, I like the answers. Guess. They were fun. The, <laughs> Seven. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I love that answer to the first question. I yeah. thought it was. Really <laughs> <laughs> well, I liked that they didn't call it ancient. They just called it Egypt. Yeah. That's kind of true, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's like they didn't call World War One World War One. <laughs> they call it this they, war. They call, it, they call it the Great War because they thought nothing's going to beat this one. <laughs> and then the second one came along. And they went, oh, the sequel's so much better. <laughs> How do you do on confidence, Kelly? Um. I actually think he was very confident. I'm going to give him a uh, seven and a half on confidence. Yeah, he was very confident. 14 and a half. I'm just going to give you 10, 20. You're Fraser Crane. Yeah, I mean, man. Brendan, Brendan Fraser, sorry. I like Brendan Fraser. Yeah, I know you like them. So I wanted to make sure you were Brendan Fraser. <laughs> He's likable. I like him too. Blast from the past. He's good. Love that movie. Mm-hmm. They're trapped in the, uh, what have you, bomb shelter with Christopher sure. Walken. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's get Alicia the Asian Silverstone, Egypt. my word. Yeah. Okay. So Jen... And uh, it is Dr. Jen Thumb, but she has everyone. She has said we can call her Jen, just so everybody out there knows. Um, what was an ancient Egyptian name for Egypt? Was it Catland? It was not Catland. Oh, okay. Uh, it was Kemet. Not, and that, not far. You know, that <laughs> sounds, that's what I, I was like, you know what? And There's the no meaning of that it. has land in it. <laughs> yeah. It's black land. Yes. Yeah, so it's the black land. And that's like a reference to the the fertile like silt in the Nile Valley where things can grow. So it's like very dark kind of sediment. So it's the black land. And the areas around it, um, like on either side that are sort of like a desert are Deshret, the red land. And it sounds like the word desert, which would be really nice and really convenient, but it's probably not actually related to the word for desert. Okay. And then how many pyramids are there in Egypt? Jim said 40. Yeah, so I actually didn't know the answer to this question. I had to look it up myself, but it's a lot. And someone counted 118. And Jim, you're totally right when you said there are other pyramids outside of Egypt too. There are a bunch in Sudan. I think there's like 80 in Sudan. So There's loads, of, there's loads in like Mexico from the Mayans and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Yep. Yeah, But those aren't nearly as big, right, in Egypt? Yeah, they doesn't have to all be big. Yeah. I got one in my backyard. It's like saying there's small. monster trucks, other cars don't exist. <laughs> yeah. You still got a hatchback here and there. I didn't, I, I guess I, I've never been to that region of the world, but I mean, I only ever see the pictures of the Great Pyramids, I guess. And there's, yeah. well, there's like four or five of those. How so do you believe know. the Great Pyramids were made? Because, you know, all the alien talk and all that sort of stuff. I reckon it just took a bit of time. <laughs> bit of time and a yeah. bit of manpower. I'm totally with you on that. I think when people think they're they're doing something for their king, who's also like a god, they're very motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what you're talking about, ancient aliens that you watch? That's that they say aliens did it? Like aliens, okay. So the pyramids, correct me if I'm wrong. So this is the one thing that really does make me go, ooh. The great pyramids at the 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 exact point of the longest point of latitude and longitude on the planet. And so, so in measurements, they're at the exact point. How did they make them at that point? Luck. Aliens. Okay. <laughs> Is it? I don't know that that's true. I don't think that's I true. I don't think it's true either. But, <laughs> but, but that's the, that's the, well, that's the only argument. But someone the, said it. So it's That's the only thing that spins me out is the longitude latitude thing. Oh, okay. I know there's a golf course next to it and I don't know, I think that's a spiritual place. <laughs> True. It can be for some. What I never get is, so there's like rooms in there. I always thought it was just like solid. And then now there's like just, there's hallways and rooms. And yeah. how do they build that? You, an architect? What do you mean? How same, do they build same that? Same way they build Seems the like outside. collapse inside. I don't know. You gotta have like. Have you been to the Luxor? I have with you. Yeah. Yeah, we saw same, the Blue Man Group there. Same thing. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. Do you know thing. where one of the biggest pyramids in the world is? Uh, uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, I've seen that one, yeah. The Bass Pro Shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What does the word pharaoh mean? What did I so say? So you said... He said, said king. Said yeah. king. Yeah, so um, you're technically right. This is why I was like, okay, okay. But literally, it doesn't mean king. It means great house. So originally, it meant like just the household of the king. But over time, it came to refer to the king himself. So it's kind of like if we say that something is done by the Vatican or the White House, but we actually are talking about like a person in charge. Or the House of Gucci. Oh, <laughs> or yes. the House of Gucci. Yeah. Yep. Yes. 
Well, it depends if you're talking about like Gucci the brand or if you're talking about the, the um, ha- I'm talking about the house, the HBO Gucci. show, the the you know the dance troupe, House of Gucci. Okay. <laughs> What's no, that? that was a good show. What's that show called? I can't remember, but yeah, it's a good show. You, show. you told no me to watch it. It was good. No. It was like the drag uh, and go. Gene, that guy, uh, Deshaun Wesley. That's yeah, the, uh, good show. I don't remember the name of it. How many pharaohs were there? Uh, Jim said several. He said King Tut, Mia Pharaoh, and they said twenty-seven. <laughs> You're right that there were, there's more than one, right? Yeah. So there's several, yeah, several. So there's, quit, there's quit about being hundred- nice to him, Jen. Quit being yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's about 170, about 170. Huh. Yeah, Egypt has like a super long history. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, about 170. And we think that the first, the first person who would have been considered um, like a fair, a king of Egypt is a guy named Narmer. Were they, the were, were, were they all families or were they voted in? Was it like the House of Windsor? Or, oh, or, just so, or, or was it like presidents? Yeah, it's such a good question. So usually it's families and that's what makes like a dynasty. So it's a family. And then if something happens where there's like a change in rule, it's usually a different family. or a different So there could be coups. There could be coups that overthrow the family and stuff like that. Or is it just like, well, there was no elections, I assume. No elections. There could be like lots of lots of reasons for like change. Either like um, the government falls apart, and there's like multiple people trying to rule at one time, and then it gets consolidated again under another family. Or there's a couple periods where like people who are not from Egypt come in and like there could be campaigns where my name's Jim. I want to be Pharaoh. Vote don't vote for me. But you should know that my competitor, he doesn't even like cats. (laughs) <laughs> that, would, that would definitely not uh, be like he's a, great a thing. fucking yeah. cat hater. <laughs> you, you'd, you'd hold up a tablet that was carved yeah, and just yeah, him yeah. beating a cat, and you're like, that doesn't, it's not even yeah, like, proof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah G- Jim Jeffries for Pharaoh. I like cats. Uh, <laughs> this campaign paid for by the Jeffries. Yeah. <laughs> cat positive. Yeah. You said the first Pharaoh's name was Narmer. Yeah, terrible name. Yeah. Yeah, you don't remember yeah. that guy. Jeffrey, <laughs> Jeffrey Narmer. <laughs> Pharaoh Narmer. Yeah, Jeffrey Narmer. He's fucking pyramid stank. <laughs> um, and then the last Pharaoh was, who was it? Oh, Cleo. Was technically Cleopatra. The, the You know, everybody just says Cleopatra. She's Cleopatra the seventh. Oh, so it wasn't all men. I thought Cleopatra was a different thing. So it was, it, it went like the royal family. So you had females and males and, oh, yeah. Cleopatra, I, I, I've seen the Elizabeth Taylor movie back in the day, but I can't remember. Was she meant to be stunning? That, that was the thing, that she was a good sort? Yeah, apparently people really liked her for one reason or another. Maybe she was beautiful. Maybe she was witty. Could have been a combination. And and was there any handsome pharaohs? Because they always carved the faces. You get to see all the statue. And like in your all your expeditions, are you ever going, Zam? <laughs> 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 you know, you, <laughs> that's the thing about uh when we talk about hieroglyphs we can talk more about this but you know when they show a person they're not really showing like what the person really looks like in egyptian art so it, it would be hard to tell i think i was just in harrod's uh shopping center the most beautiful shopping center in the world mm-hmm. shopping center in the world and that all their uh, escalators are all egyptian themed and they have like pharaoh heads going down it's all very ornate and marble and stuff like that and uh, and I remember thinking, oh, that that bloody that pharaoh, he's got a, quite a striking sort of look. And it's because um, what's his name, uh, Muhammad Al Fayed, whose father was Dodi Al Fayed, whose son was Dodi Al Fayed, who died in the car crash with Diana, who owned Harrods. He's an Egyptian fella, and he decided to have all of his faces on all the pharaohs that are in the Egyptian center in the thing. So there's a little tidbit for you. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> we all learnt nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I like her. I never realized that What's there the were so many Cleopatras. Like, there are? Yeah, yeah, there's seven. Yeah, seven. She just said seven. the last pharaoh was yeah. Cleopatra seventh. The seventh. So every time we reference Cleopatra. And also, also, I think I've been to about three strip clubs in my life that's called Cleopatra's. Yeah. That's like a popular <laughs> name. Yeah. yeah, it's like you have a bit of a, a, a Egyptian motif in there or whatever yeah, they call yeah. it. Cleo- You've been to Cleopatra's, yeah, you right? you go to Queen Elizabeth's uh, yeah, yeah, strip yeah. club. Yeah, in 50, in 50 years we go on Lizzie the Second strip club. <laughs> that was always the question. They always used to say that when somebody asked once, uh, and a lot of comedians have done jokes about this, that uh, they go, William and Harry, have they ever been to strip clubs? And one of the royal watches with. Well, they are young men, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I have no problem with them going to strip clubs, but a lot of people have made this joke. But it's like the reality is they would have been putting money into G-strings with pictures of their grandmother on it. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. makes it a bit, you know. It's, awesome. like, it's like if William or Harry ever got a hooker and they're just like, there's a thousand grands. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, um, how old was King Tut when he became Pharaoh? Jim said early 20s. Early 20s. So he was young. Apparently he was nine, maybe 10. Um, so he was like a little boy. Yeah, which, but back in yeah. those days, he would look 22 <laughs> with all the heat in the sand. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 no like, like, I gotta say, back then, <laughs> none of this skin was like, Fucking perfect. <laughs> yeah, no sunscreen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, all right, King Tut, and it's. I have a note here. He's only famous King Tut because his tomb was intact. That's. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, that's like the most the 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 reason why you hear so much about Steve him. Martin. Yeah, he's he's not one of the most. <laughs> po- he wasn't one of the most pointy or important pharaohs of them all, but they just had so many artifacts. Right, there's just everything yeah. was there. And they yeah. still find people to this day, don't they? They still like dig up and they go, oh, we found another bloke. Like, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't the idea that we have so many mummies, like there's loads of mummies. It's not like there's like five on earth. There's tons of them. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, there's, well, if you had the means, you wanted your body to pre- preserve for the afterlife. So yeah, this is how you would want to be treated and after you die. So basically anyone who could afford that, they were mummified and if they're still around from like just natural preservation, their tomb is intact and they're, they're still there and it's possible that they'll be excavated at some point. And when you're a child, when they talk about mummification, the thing that kids are always fascinated by whenever they mention mummies, they pull the brains out through the nose, right? Is yeah. that something that kids that you teach now? They're always like that. My son loves that. They pull the, they put a hook up there and they rip the brain out. Is that what happens? Yeah, yeah they used to take right. the brains out through How the nose. It Sounds like it take a this long comes time. Comes out in a lot of pieces. Yeah, strips. Yeah, just a bit of strip. Mm. Is that why you have a nose ring to protect your brain? Ever <laughs> <be taken? laughs> you figured out my secret. <laughs> so now I have to kill you. <laughs> um, around 1200 BC, there was a plot to assassinate the Pharaoh Ramses III. Which family member plotted to kill him? Was it Ramsey's the fifth? Ramsey's the fifth. It was not. I thought that was a really good suggestion, though. Like, you know, who would it have been? It was actually one of his wives. So one of his, mm. like, secondary wives. Oh, yeah. And the reason was that she wanted to put her own son on the throne instead of his successor, like his named successor. I mean, actually, apparently, there's evidence that uh, they did maybe succeed in actually killing him, but she never got her son on the throne. Um. The month of August is the eighth month of the year due to which pharaoh? Jim said Octavia. I was super impressed that you very, like, you almost got the this person's name before they had, like, their, the later name that the word August comes from. So it's Octavian, and he na- renames himself Augustus, Augustus Caesar. Mm. Yeah, Did you do it because it was the eighth like, month? Was seven. Uh. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so... So Augustus Caesar, he's emperor, Roman emperor. And so because he's in the Roman Empire, Egypt was part of the Roman Empire after he, um, after Cleopatra, same Cleopatra, Cleopatra VII, commits suicide. And um, that's because of her conflict with with the guy who becomes Emperor Augustus. So because he's like um, emperor of this whole empire, including Egypt, he's also, you could consider him a pharaoh. So it's kind of like two answers to this question. It's either because of Augustus, so the month is named August after him, and he's a king of Egypt because he's a king of the whole mm. empire, or it's because of Cleopatra because it's the, in the eighth month celebrating her death, which happened in that month. So, 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 so the Roman Empire, which was the biggest empire that ever ruled the world, world ever, it came from Egypt. No, it didn't come from Egypt. Uh, Egypt was a province in the Roman Empire for a few centuries. All right, so Caesar, he was an Italian bloke. He wasn't an Egyptian bloke who was sent out there to do a job, right? Well, so he's like kind of, he rehashes what the Romans think of as like the kind of rulership that they have, and he like turns it into an empire that spans basically everywhere where the Romans could. What I'm trying to ask is, did Caesar talk with his hands? (laughs) <laughs> did he like i'm gonna take over the whole world the <laughs> like, I I like you, that. That. So, you know what i'll give you a, i'll give you like a super nerdy answer to that he probably did talk with his hands <laughs> because we know 
in the way like the Romans, and this is actually not my field at all. So I hope I'm not getting any of this wrong. Like the Romans, um, they had this like kind of practice of being like an orator. So like being able to tell stories in public in a certain way and hand gestures were part of that. Oh, yeah. You see like a statue of a person who's like making a certain kind of statement, their hands, the gestures actually matter. So yeah, he totally talked with his hands. The Pharaoh's hats that have like the snakes coming off it in the, the you know, the curly beards and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Did they yeah. rock around in that hat on a daily basis or is that like the queen's crown? So I think there's like some crowns that you would wear regularly and some that you only wear in like certain ceremonies and then they're depicted in like all kinds of them but i don't think you'd want to wear like a super heavy crown all the time but and like did, not in did, private did king tut just have a walk-in wardrobe with like loads of fucking snakehead hats and then, <laughs> well, and, then he, and then he turned to his wife like i gotta go to this fucking function uh, <laughs> which snake should i bloody wear on me head today Where's yeah, me I bloody don't... curling tongs for me beer? <laughs> you be fucking using them again, bloody hell. When I go to the afterlife, I'm going alone. That's what I thought about I... David Bowie too when I was just watching this documentary. I was like, did he have a pair of jeans? You think? <laughs> <laughs> blue jeans? And he was like, I'm wearing my blue jeans Cargo today. pants? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, no. <laughs> Do we know how uh, Cleopatra committed suicide? Um, so the the story is that it was with a, a venomous snake, I think, like oh. an asp or something. Wow, yeah, I don't cool. know if that's, that's cool, true. That's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's true. But. Yeah. Um, the Egyptians believed that when you died, you had to pass a sort of test to get into the afterlife. They weighed one of your body parts on a scale to determine if you get in. Which body part was it? Jim said the skull. Yeah, it's the heart, actually. Mm. Um, and I want to like, so we just had this whole conversation about taking the brain out. And uh, that the reason why they took the brain out, if you had like the full like deal mummification, right, is because they didn't ha un like understand that it had the function that we understand it does. So they, they ascribed all of that stuff to the heart. So your heart was like where your thoughts were. So it's kind of like, your mind, they thought that that was where your heart yeah. So it's like if it's heavier, you go. Um, if, so, it's, so, if it's lighter, oh, lighter, you can pass into the afterlife. Oh, and if you have right. like a heavy so, heart. Oh, yeah. So if you die with a heavy heart because you've been eating too much pork, <laughs> you, you and, can't do it. And mummification, they had different packages. Like the platinum yeah, like package that, yeah. was like getting all of your organs out. And then if you couldn't afford that, you got like copper, which is just the basics. Yeah. I think like uh, kind of like with any industry, there were like, there's like wow. the full package. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah probably. Yes. I mean, All there's right, like mate, an idea. You're not going to get the pyramid. We have a cargo container. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll be in yeah, there with so several other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess you didn't love your pharaoh. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. You get to the afterlife. It just matters that you get here. Yeah. Here like at Mummies King, or Us. Probably. I'm sure the king always had the best. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you don't want the brains package. Was there, a, was, there <laughs> was there ever like a rich cunt called like a Jeff Bezos of the of the Egyptian world who just looked at the King's Pyramid and just went, I'm gonna have a bigger one. Everyone can no, fuck off. There, what, because like it, everything was so, especially in that period when the when the the pyramids of Giza that you're thinking of were built, like everything's so tightly controlled by the 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 like royal establishment that like you could not do that. So there wasn't like a billionaire who was like, oh, he has an abacus empire. <laughs> it was like the, I love the idea. It was like that, the Microsoft of so. its day. Like, oh, that guy's the abacus king. <laughs> I wish that would be way more interesting. But yeah, I think I think no. Oh, he's a great sundial maker. <laughs> If you didn't get into the afterlife, a monster that was part hippo, part lion, and part croco would do what to you? Would it talk you to death with small talk? <laughs> um, I love that answer, but actually would eat you. Uh, oh, that is worse than violate the other way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 probably yeah, just eat yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The, I assume it would do that. other things to you, though. Stop on you it, wouldn't, it wouldn't just <laughs> eat you. I'm sure there'd be other degrading things that would do you. Yeah, it would piss on you and stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, does he eat you right or does he prepare you? Uh, Jeffrey Narmer. Yeah. I don't know. It's a hippo <laughs> lion croc. Doesn't really need to prepare you. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. I think and the the name of the monster is Ahmet, which means the devourer. Ooh. I'll tell you what's wrong with that. So I watched that Jeffrey Dahmer thing. The acting in it's fantastic, by the way. It's and it's shot beautifully. And I, I, I really liked it. And then I said to my wife, who doesn't really like horror things, I said, Oh, you gotta watch it. It's very good, right? So my wife started watching Jeffrey Dahmer with me last night. 
And now because I'm on my second loop of watching it again, I'm starting to feel sorry for Jeffrey. And I'm like this, oh, oh no. no one liked him. <laughs> he just needed a friend. He's like eating people in his apartment. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like this, oh, God, if you could just have a friend. <laughs> you think if they had Postmates back then he wouldn't have done it? Ooh. No, it's he, he, <laughs> yeah. They they tried to make it seem like it was a hate crime, a racist crime, but it wasn't really. It was just that he really liked. If you got killed by him, it meant that he was into you. It was a compliment of sorts. Oh right. <laughs> like, oh, okay. He he liked you so much. He wanted you inside of him in the form of food. Like mm. he was a big fan. If mm. he killed you, take it as a compliment. Right. Right. Speaking of food, uh, yeah, that's so much better. <laughs> Speaking of food, what are the two most common food items Egyptians hope to have in the afterlife? Jim said sugar and bread. Yeah, you're half right. So bread is one of them. Um, sugar was a good guess. The other is actually beer. So mm. there's like a list of things that you would put in your It's a lot of carbs bread. though, isn't it? A lot of it carbs. Is a lot of carbs. You're dead though. Who cares? You're dead. It's Beer like and the, bread. There's no calories yeah. in the afterlife. Yeah, yeah but you want, some, right. you want some kebab meat on top of that bread. You don't want to just like, you, you, you yeah. drink 50 beers, then you go, I'd like to have some bread. Have a bit of grease in there. You said, and you said there's a beer. Sure. There's an inspired. There's a beer inspired yeah. by Egyptian beer. Yeah, yeah. Dogfish Head makes a beer that's inspired by like the Egyptian beer, and it's called Tahenket, which means in ancient Egyptian, the beer. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I have not had it, but I think the label actually even says the name of the beer in ancient Egyptian, which is pretty cool. I think it's got like spices and stuff in it. Uh, but the reason why bread and beer is actually because it has so many calories. This is like the staples of the Egyptian diet. So they'd want that in the afterlife just to make sure like they can, you know, have like things to eat. But there's other wow. stuff on the wish list too. There's like they want mead and like poultry and some other like luxury items like linen and alabaster. And they say like, and also everything good, like just in case, you know, it's right. like a catch all. There's a, good. there's a lyric in Cheeseburger in Paradise called Warm Beer and Bread They Say Can Raise the Dead. It's an Egypt reference. Oh, that's Holy awesome. crap. Did that's you know awesome. that? Oh, yeah. I, got I did a, not know that. I have a good name for a podcast for you. It's actually a good name for a podcast for me, but for different reasons. We can both have it uh, called <laughs> Mummy Issues. <laughs> That's good. That's that good. is really good. I love it. And it does apply to both of you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. And we wouldn't have any crossover topics or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, except maybe with the Ramses, the third, and the <laughs> wife, and the son. And, yeah, maybe. Uh, ancient Egyptians had cures for many ailments. For a head wound, what would they put on the patient's skull? Jim said pigskin. Yes, why not? Yeah. Uh, that's not correct. But before that, you were like, maybe ointments. And I think you were like thinking in the right, in the mm. right direction. So... There's a medical papyrus that's from around 1500 BCE, and it says that you have to bandage the patient with fresh meat on the first day and then treat him afterwards with an oil and honey mixture every day until he gets better. So okay. meat and honey and oil. Meat and honey and oil. Yeah, because I always yeah. see when people get black eyes, they throw meat on it. Have you ever done that? I don't think that. It's because it's cold and it's meant to be. I thought it was like iron or something i don't know well, i think it's just, yeah i don't know if that works i think it's to take swelling down <laughs> yeah i don't know you're throwing meat on your face <laughs> oh, not, not rami <laughs> <laughs> i think it's because yeah. i think it's, i think it's because it's, it's cold and it's from the fridge and it's so soft to the touch and it'll, it's just, yeah because like on a, on a thing on your knee or something like that you get like a bag of frozen peas but you don't want to do that on your eye because it'll be too cold and it will be feel rigid yeah. against the puffed up skin so meat's a soft touch that will still remain cold mm. honey makes sense because Manuka is big these days. Manuka, honey. Manuka. Do you, yeah. do you did you see? Yeah. Have you seen or heard anything from ancient aliens where you go, oh, maybe? I've never even watched. Oh, you got to watch aliens. it. You got to watch I it. There's a, there's a guy. <laughs> My dad. There's a guy show. who has too much fake tan, and he's yeah. just like, hey, it's an alien on everything. He right? looks cracked out all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he's fully <laughs> in. He's fully in. But then there's some things like there was like the, the they had invented small batteries and stuff like that and like how would they do that and then there was there's some pictures of light bulbs on the hieroglyphics and I'm like oh man if I watch too much of it I go fall down the rabbit hole so I have to turn off the ancient aliens he's a part time conspiracy theorist I am yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ancient Egyptians they, are uh, they're not light bulbs in the hieroglyphs whatever they are someone needs to all right, someone's part of the cover up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Ancient Egyptians are sometimes shown with beards. Straight beards and curved beards mean two different things. If you have a curved beard, it means that you are, Jim said, woo woo. <laughs> That's, that's, that's well. I'm just saying they were homophobic back then. So they, if you remember when with ear, earrings, if you have an earring in your right ear, you were gay. Left ear, you were heterosexual. Okay. What, that's what, not what, what it meant, right? What a terrible system. No. Yeah, terrible yeah. System. Just, just ask. <laughs> that's not I'll what, tell you. <laughs> that's not what it meant, though, right, Jim? Yeah. So if you had a curved beard, like if you're shown in Egyptian art with a curved beard, it means you're dead. Mm. And if you're shown with a straight beard, it means that you're being shown when you're alive. Like the statues, the horse statues in Britain. Oh, they do that here too. If there's like one leg up or two legs up or something like that. Yeah, right? so all, all, battle, all legs, legs on the ground, yeah. all legs on the ground. If a man's on a horse, he was a general, means he died in retirement of yeah. old age. One leg up means died uh, uh, while still in the job, but just of an illness or something like that. Two legs up, died in battle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Three legs up. I didn't know that either. Yeah. That's that's like such a good, oh, I'm going to use that now when I explain. Oh, when you walk around the UK, happens. you know right away, like that one, that one, that one. And then if it has a traffic cone on its head, it means that a drunk guy, <laughs> how, how did he get up there? <laughs> as soon as you see, you're like, how did they do that? Uh, here's where I think you got some points, Jim. Mew is the ancient Egyptian word for what? And you said cat. Yep. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah so there's yeah. Few, there's some words, probably yeah. more than this than some, wow. where it's like uh, it's a, it, the word comes from the sound that the animal makes. For example. So, yeah. And what about the word mummy? Is that from posh British kids or the medical term for mummification? What is it? I love the posh British kids answer because my husband is British and this is immediately, and my in laws are visiting me right now, actually. So I'm, I'm going to tell them about this later. Are, funny. They, are, they, so, are uh, they posh? Because I've got, I've, got, I've got a British wife and British family like on that side. Um, and they're a bit posh, my ones. My ones. <laughs> They're like a little posh. They're like from Yorkshire, but, oh, but they, they they're are posh. Are they, <laughs> are they from are they from York? Because Yorkshire. They are from York. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, you married into money. <laughs> <laughs> so I liked your your the medical term for mummification. It's uh it's like kind of related. So um the word mummy comes through Arabic. Uh, from the Persian word mamiya, mm. which means like tar or bitumen. So I think you also mentioned like um, the body being dark or something like that, which is like spot on. So uh, people used to think that mummified bodies were covered in tar or bitumen because when they first encountered them, like, you know, post ancient people first encountered them, the skin of the mummified bodies appeared to be like kind of blackened. So they thought it was tar or bitumen. Mm. Okay. Uh, Oh. Yeah, that was the next question. What is mummy brown? And Jim said, that's the color you turn after you die. The oh, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, how, so, that's how a posh British kid tells its parents and needs a nappy change. <laughs> mummy <laughs> brown. <laughs> this is, unfortunately, I wish that you were right the answer to this because it's like super gross and really unethical, but it's a, it's a paint that was produced um, by Europeans in, from the 16th to the 19th centuries. It's a paint that's made from the remains of mummified Egyptians. Oh, um, it's you're, not doing, made anymore. you're doing mummy face. Yeah. It's called mm. recycling. And oh, yeah. what, did, what did they paint with the mummy? That's how many like mummies. Walls we, that's stuff? how many mummies we had. We had paint made out of mummies, man. But they paint their walls and stuff of their homes, or what were they painting? Um, it's mostly like European like paintings on canvas, for example. Oh, like, yeah, so yeah, like art. portraits okay. and things like that. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And they also like um apothecaries in Europe, they would sell like a powder that's made from ancient Egyptian, like mummified bodies. And you, you were meant to like put it on your skin or eat it or drink it. Can I just no buy, sense. can I buy a mummy then if we were just pulping them up and that type of stuff? Can I have one and have it in the corner of my house is like my ancient Egypt artifact? No. <laughs> but what if I ask nicely? I think, no. <laughs> then why am I allowed to buy the paint? You're not allowed no, to anymore. Paint anymore. Paint anymore. No, was, no, they don't in the 16th it. and the 19th century, people are doing that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not yeah. anymore. Uh, well, I wasn't around then. Yeah, you, you, you missed the boat. Yeah, back then you could have gotten a mummy and put it in there in the corner. What can I buy? Can I buy? <laughs> can I buy any of those artifacts? What about a mummified animal? That's our next question. Jim got that right, I think. Is that I, they yeah, mummified yeah, animal? Yeah, I've watched. A, I've watched a lot of movies. There's always some stone that if you hold it and you say something, something spooky is going to happen. How often does that happen? It's never happened to me. 
Mm. Well, can you get a mummified animal? Oh. Jim, Jim, do you want a mummified cat? That You got that right. You said in addition to deceased loved ones, what else did Egyptians mummify? They had animals, right? Pets? Yeah, pets. Is that what they Yeah, did? yeah. Pets, um, like a couple different, like I, I was going for animals with this question and there's like different reasons why you mummify an animal. So there's like, if you had a pet or in your tomb, they would sometimes mummify like parts of animals for you to eat. So like food mummies, basically. And then there's this type of animal mummy that's kind of meant to like, send a message to the gods for you. And that's the idea of like sacrificing animals in a temple like situation so in, that it can, yeah. In reality, right? Cause every consumerism, this has happened since the dawn of time. There was somebody whose job was to mummify people. And then they were like, how can we get some add-ons? Cause if you ever buy a funeral, there's packages, right? Right. And they've gone, they've gone, oh, put some mummified food in there. If I can throw in a cat. Oh, yeah, oh, you want it? the cat upgrade? Oh, yeah, I'll have a cat. As well. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get hungry in the afterlife. All right. I don't need to pay for that. All right. If you want to be starving, oh, okay, <laughs> throw in some fucking food. I can't take it with me, or can I? You know, so yeah, yeah I reckon it was that was just uh, some bloke with a business who was trying to. Cause, Upselling. Yeah, because <laughs> the Egyptians, I know a bit about them. They love a bit of negotiating. They're a, they're a bartering uh, race of people, aren't they? They like to do deals and stuff, you know, so I reckon that's where it comes from. All right, so um, <laughs> the tattoos. <laughs> On which part of their bodies did some ancient Egyptian women have tattoos? Jim said tramp stamps, always of the Sphinx. Yeah. And a symbol with a hoop and a stick through it. Also, the symbol with a hoop and a stick, you're thinking of an ankh, which means life in yeah. Egyptian. Oh, that is um, such a, a white guess. chick tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have this thing. It means life. <laughs> I have seen a lot of tattoos on, like, living modern people of onks. Like, yeah. it's very popular, yeah. Oh, I so, love um, now that I know the word, I go, like your onk. <laughs> yeah. And they will have no idea and what you're talking go, about. you got lovely onks there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's nice onk. Um, That's even nice onk. <laughs> yeah, even, he'll it's, even point in and go onk onk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got a fat onk. This doesn't make you want to get an onk tattoo now. No, You're no, not no. like tempted. I might. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm get an onk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, I was thinking of this like of a lot of research recently into um, tattoos on on people whose like mummified bodies are preserved. And a colleague of mine was um, looking at one case where a, a woman had tattoos on her arms and her neck and her shoulders and her back. So all areas that you could see. And what they sort of think is going on is that um, there's like um, some relationship between those tattoos and the job that this person had or like the, their participation in some kind of religious practice. And the, the, the specific example that I was thinking of, she had a tattoo on her neck that said to do good. So it's almost like she could kind of, you know, because of having this tattoo, like everything that came out of her mouth and she's her voice is like supposed to be for good, which I thought was pretty cool. Right. So uh, people covered in tattoos are good. Great. Yeah. And their That's job might have been <laughs> paper and, you know, something to write on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a good bumper bar sticker. Eh? You put the onk symbol, right? And then you go, if you're horny. <laughs> <laughs> Sell that at your Egyptian shops. <laughs> Put that on there, people. Onk if you're horny. All right, we're going to look at some of these uh, <laughs> objects here now, uh, Jack. Um, the same ones I pulled yeah, up earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah, things. Yeah. All right, here we go. The first one that you here pulled up there, here The it's... Uh, oh, I didn't get any of these. Uh, maybe. You don't know. <laughs> I think the cocktail shaker was good. Yeah, I think it is a cocktail shaker. <laughs> big drinkers. Well, I didn't see how big it was. That could have been six foot tall or six inches tall. Okay, so this is, again, this looks like... Uh, it's like a big, I don't know, it's like greenish. And oh, it's a, a lot tombstone. Of tombstone? Yeah, he's at a tombstone. This is the first yeah. one there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that this is a good guess because I didn't tell you how big these are, and it's pretty small. It's like the size of my hand. Uh -huh. um, it's a little sculpture that's used in, like, medicine, so it would help you cure your snake bites, protect you from snake bites. So it's like mm -hmm. a specific kind of object where there's a guy in the middle who's a child god, Horus, and he's right. holding all these, like, stingy venomous animals like snakes and he's standing on some crocodiles oh, and stuff yeah, yeah so the idea is like you dip this in water or you pour water over it and you put the water on your snake bite you'd you be like mom it. i'm going out and she'll be like, take your snake bite yeah. stone <laughs> oh, mom i don't need it take your snake bite stone or you're not going anywhere <laughs> how common were snake bites at this time 
I, I'm probably way more common than they are now. I mean, yeah. I think yeah. like the desert or my like the oh, no, reeds then, and stuff. Like the snakes were jamming as all fuck back then. They didn't like walk, run away or hide. They were yeah. just walking down the street. Like, what about it, mate? <laughs> <laughs> It's My swatting. nightmare. I'm terrified of snakes. All right. The uh, next artifact we have here, object, uh, is. All right. Jim so, so tell it, it, looks tell like, it looks like a like a, it does look like a cocktail shaker. Tell me it's the like, tell me know. the height of it, and I'll give you a real answer. What's the height of it? Yeah. What? Uh, it's about a foot tall, foot maybe tall. a little bit taller with with the the top. So there's a top. And a bottom. That's a sub sandwich holder. We saw them on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> you put your sub in your sandwich in there. Got some writing on the side. Yeah. What is this for, Jen? This is called a canopic jar. And it's, uh, we were talking earlier about like organs being removed and mummified separately. And that's what this is for. So if you had this treatment, not everybody did, um, four specific organs would be removed and put in their own jars. And this is one of them. And it's for someone's mummified lungs. And it belonged to a man named Pop Hair Natcher. And uh, it is empty now, just in case you're wondering. No, it's, yeah, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to throw in the lung jar, aren't I? <laughs> no extra cost. Package. No extra cost. Although there is delivery fees <laughs> <laughs> on the lung jar. <laughs> All right, uh, one more object we have. It's a, a little sculpture of, I, it looks like a mummy. Kind how how of big is this? Because is I thought it was six inches. How big is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like maybe, I think it's like maybe eight or nine inches tall. Yeah, it's, it's like you inches. could you could hold it in your hand. Right. Green, greenish in color. I always call six inch things eight or nine inches. So that's where <laughs> I got thrown off. Jim said something to put on the fireplace. Good for the wife, not the husband. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Dildo. Uh, what did you think of me? Uh, oh, I didn't. I didn't catch. I'm that. lewd. I'm a lewd fella. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was keeping a crush. Yeah. All right. So, um, not something to put on the fireplace. Something you put in your in your tomb. So this is called an ushabti. It's a figurine that magically does your chores for you in the afterlife. Oh, yeah. you need one of these. You put you put, you put, yeah. you put a hula skirt on it. You can put it on the dashboard of your car. <laughs> You could. I need one of these and, before life. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, the cool thing about these is that, well, a couple of cool things. One is that um, at some point they decide that you really need one for every day of the year. So they will produce like 365 of them. And then at another point they decide that just to make sure that those figurines were really doing their job, they need some overseer ones. So a full set is 401. 365. It's the, it's the, that's truly yeah. upselling. It's the yeah, same yeah. guy. It's the same guy. And you, you're like, you're like, hey, do you want any taskmaster? Do you want a taskmaster? A job, a job, a taskmaster in the afterlife. You know, get your jobs done, you know, sort out your laundry. Why does he talk like this? Because he's a cockney bloke. He's a bit, you know, who are about the whole thing, right? Over. And he's just like, does a few tasks for you. You want a taskmaster? And then you're like, sure, I'll have one. He goes, one. <laughs> you only want one task done in one day. You know, there's 360 something days in the year. You're going to need one for all of them. I'll throw in some spares, 400. Yeah. I think this guy could afford it too because the person this ancient one belonged to was like a chief physician. His name was Nezva Nebjed. And on it, in the inscription, it has like his titles. And we know that he was like, in charge of a bunch of other physicians. So yeah. He, he Gosh, the funerals they, or whatever, they, they must've cost so much Yeah, because these are like, these are like very intricate. I mean, if you're not watching on YouTube, this is a very intricate little sculpture. Like, yeah, there's, there's, there's no assembly line. Yeah. This, yeah, this yeah, is but, all handmade. Yeah, but it's someone's business. There was no TV back then. So people had time to do things. Right, but people yes. are dying all the time. And to make 400 of these for each yeah, dead person. Yeah. Mate, look at that craftsmanship. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's yeah. Jay Green, my friend. That's a very <laughs> expensive stone. <laughs> It's it's made in a mold. Actually, I was going to ask oh. you, you know, why it's green because it's not made of stone. You know, it? they they yeah. wait. They had molds. They made molds. Oh, what what yeah. material is it? It's a it's a material that we call faience, but the Egyptians called it chehenet, which means like the shiny thing. Mate, that's and the it's, finest um, chehenet you'll see this yeah. time. <laughs> you you, so won't, you won't see this north of the pyramids, mate. I tell you that much. <laughs> it's so good though. This one is like. Super, like beautiful, but the yeah, this really is cool. like you know if you like ever play with clay like as a kid you like or maybe now if you like play around with clay when you make things out of clay it's like made from like silt like earth this is the material that 
uh, it's like clay, but the base of it is quartz, like ground up quartz. Mm-hmm. And so it's quartz and some like salts and some water and then copper, which is why it's green. And when you bake it, it turns green or blue. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like has all these associations with like rebirth, which like green and blue do anyway, but also the fact that it changes when you bake it. It's like it's been reborn. So it's really popular material for things that go in your tomb. Can I buy one of these for me, Mandel? Uh, I would say, please don't. <laughs> Why <laughs> not? They they exist on the antiquities market, but I want to encourage you not to. Why, why, why is it bad for me to do this? Is it because it's limited and, and you're Indiana Jones and that should be in a museum? <laughs> yeah, in a way, because like then more people have access to it. But if it goes into like a private collection, like if you decide you want to be a private collector and you can legally buy something on the antiquities market, which which some people do, then you'll probably never know anything about its context because no one will come and research it, you know, in your private collection and you won't be able to, to understand more of its like history and where it fits in. So please don't buy things from the antiquity market. All right. I won't do it then. <laughs> um, you talked me out of it. What? <laughs> Dr. Jones. <laughs> what, what does the word hieroglyphs mean? Jim said high graphics, graphics of greetings. Is, what does it mean? I this is a really good guess. It's a good guess. It's, I mean, sacred carving, which comes from Greek. Actually, so like the word hieroglyphs is, is from Greek. It's not the Egyptian word. The Egyptians themselves called them medu nature, which means like the God's words. Um, and the Greek is probably just a translation of the Egyptian. So it's like. Can you, can you read hieroglyphics and are you certain that what you're reading is correct or could have it been uh, uh, not dissected. Um, what's the term? Deciphered. Just, could it could it be deciphered yeah. wrong? So I can read hieroglyphs, and we are pretty sure that by now all the sort of kinks have been worked out in in the, from like original decipherment. But actually, this week um, is the two hundred uh, year anniversary of the decipherment of hieroglyphs. Oh. And so yeah, September eighteen twenty two. Do you ever read some of them like, oh, this this guy knew what he's talking about? And you ever read one of them and go, this person was a moron? <laughs> and it's like it's like the hieroglyphic was went to park, went on spinny <laughs> machine, vomited. <laughs> I try not to judge people by what they wrote. Ah, but, from you know. that many years ago, <laughs> who's it hurting? Um, and Jim was right. The right to left is how you read them. Actually, it's both. You can write them both ways. And sometimes I'll have the same object because the way like Egyptian art works, people really love like balance and symmetry. So sometimes you'll have the same object and they'll write the text right to left and left to right. But the they preferred to write from left to right. Have you ever read it? Again, Jim's really good at this, actually. Have you ever read anything in hieroglyphics that could be deemed to be a joke? Like you ever go, oh, that's funny. (laughs) Uh, I haven't personally, but there were definitely jokes. Like there's like whole studies of like humor in ancient Egypt. We know that they they joked around. Oh, why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> Get to the pyramids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what what's that Nile joke? Denial. What's the, the oh, one? Yeah. Oh, denial. I'm in denial. Yeah, it's something denial. Yeah, uh, I forget how the joke goes. But like it's not the, denial. The, it's yeah, not the, just a river in Egypt a, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, something. No, doesn't like it end with? Uh, yeah. with a guy with his dick inside a pear, <laughs> and he goes, I'm fucking in despair. No, I, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember that one. That's the fun, it's like a long walk to get there. I don't but there, there is a joke. Oh, no, 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 no. There's another bloke. He's got his dick in the custard, and I'm fucking disgusted. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's where it came from. I think you're in denial. So we all learned something. <laughs> uh, the hieroglyphics, uh, the hieroglyphs that we looked at, was Jim Wright on any of them? We have a. We have a rectangle that's got a piece in the center missing on the bottom. Jim said is building. Yeah, you were like basically right. It's a house. So wow, well done. Job, Jim. And yeah, like the way um, kind of like all images in in the Egyptian language work is that they're, you're seeing them from like one plane of view. So this is from above and it's like got a doorway. Okay. In the front. So the next one looks like sort of like a bench or a bed from the uh, side. But if we're seeing it from above, that changes everything. So we're, we're seeing all of them from above? Is that what we're seeing? Not always from above, sometimes from the side. That's a bed one, then. Bed from the bed. side, it looks like a bench or a bed. This was such a good guess. It's the sky. Yeah. Uh, 
That's rubbish. You guys, um, yeah. you guys, makes that more sense. You guys haven't guess. deciphered shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't re- if you think that's the sky, that was just one bloke wanting to clock off work earlier. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, cathead, cathead, I'll call that one the fucking sky. I'm out of here. Also, Jen, not a good guess. By the way, <laughs> such a good guess. <laughs> well, it looks like a bench, though. Oh, it yeah. looks like a bench. Well, yeah, to me, you, it looks like a bench. If you, okay. want, to, if you want to switch it from okay. sky to bench, so it's if, a great guess. If that's the sky, <laughs> is the raised up bit at the bottom meant to be the sun coming up or something how is that the sky oh that's that's a good question so um it's like imagine that the sky has like pillars that hold it up above the earth that's mm. sort of like seeing the edges of the pillar oh yeah mm. it looks like so the next one looks kind of like the sun coming up now that i think about it or a dome and jim said exercise ball no, no, but if we're looking at it from above. Yeah, or the side, maybe. Uh, th- it's a side now. Yeah, yeah, three, <laughs> three, three throw line. It could be the sun, though. It could be the sun coming up. I don't know. It's from the side. Okay, sunset. Sunrise. Also a good guess that just, like, visually would be a really good guess. That's why I'm, I'm not giving him extra points, so don't worry, everybody. But it's actually a, a bread. It's a loaf of bread. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That checks out, that one. No, no one works out. A loaf yeah. of bread, you fucking there. No, not right. The, the next <laughs> The next one, the next one, Jim said womb. It looks sort of like an upside down rocket ship, kind of. Yeah. It looks a little bit like it, a womb, doesn't it? It does look like a womb, too. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's like, a heart. All yeah. right. So I wasn't far off. Heart is good, though. Yeah. Yeah. I was, only, I was only half a foot away. It looks like a cow yeah. head, too. And the next one looks sort of like a face with a cross on top of it. Jim said top of a hill. Also, like, would have been a really good guess. I don't, I, I shouldn't have given you this one. This was like really hard. It's so like all the sort of body part hieroglyphs that are like internal basically come from animals because yeah. that's is like most people's like understanding of the inside of the bodies, their experiences with animals. So this is an animal's heart and windpipe. And the reason why oh, I wow. put it here is not because Advanced. I'm like, it's a heart and windpipe. Like, that's great. It's because it's actually the sign that means good or beautiful. And I don't know why it means good or beautiful. But that, that is how you write good or beautiful. Because and- you uh, circle with it. A- Bernie face, Heart with a and a cross on top of it. No yeah. matter what they say, <laughs> Unk. <laughs> uh, number six looks sort of like it could be a duck, could be a rabbit, sort of from a profile. Kind of. What do we got yeah. here? It's dung. Oh, it's poop. poop. It's a poop emoji. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the first poop, poop emoji. Oh, I got to tell you, our poop you emojis are poop. better. Well, it's got eyeballs. Our poop emoji, but it's the first poop emoji. Yeah. These are their first emojis then, huh? Sort yeah. of, I guess, yeah. Yeah, like the, um, you asked this question, like, how do they work? And some of them can work like emojis. So there's kind of like three ways a hieroglyph can work. It can either show you what it means. So like the house one is a good example. If you just write that, it's like, that's house. Or it can be used to make a sound. So that makes the sound pair, like E-R. And it can be in the middle of a word, like spelling it out. If it needs the sound pair somewhere in the word. Or you can put at the end of a word and it gives you the general idea of what that word is about. So like the word for room, for example, would have that house, uh, the hieroglyph for house at the end to tell you that it's about something to do with houses. Mm. And we could do from this, we could do box. The last one. We go, my house is shit. (laughs) My house is shit. It's not beautiful. Mm, Have some bread. Like bread. Yeah, yeah. But I got some, <laughs> I I got, made some totally, good bread. Yeah, I should have done like a secret sentence with this. Yeah. I totally missed opportunity. What's the last one? It's not a Leatherman or a or Swiss Army knife, correct? It's it's not, but it's a, it's a harpoon. But mm. um, the reason why I included it is because when I was like studying for my, um, my exams in Egyptian language, like a while ago, my husband was helping me study. And he used to call this man on bike with frying pan. Mm. Which maybe you see now if you think about like I can't see the bike. Above, I can see the side, yeah. I see the frying pan. I can I see, see a man in a canoe. Yeah. So it it's and it means like only or one. So it has nothing to do with harpoons either. It's just a word that has to do with like being like sole or only or like on your own. But um, I cannot think of it any other way than man on bike with frying pan. How many hi- how many hieroglyphic uh, things are there? How many letters or words oh. do they have in their their thing? Uh, words, I don't know, but uh, how signs, many sim- how many symbols? Signs, there's like hundreds, hundreds, maybe maybe like three or four hundred. I'd have to, to check right, a right. lot. 
Yeah. And there's like 50 something that are just birds and they're all different birds. So like they would have been recognizable as different species of birds. Ooh, okay. Crane. Um, all right. Now <laughs> the, uh, now's the part of our show called dinner party facts. We ask our guests to give us a uh, fact, something obscure, interesting that our listeners can use to impress people about this subject. What do you got for us, Jane? Okay. So it's a true or false question. True or false. Cleopatra, the one we were just talking about, the seventh, mm. lived closer in time to the invention of Bitcoin than she did to the construction of the pyramids at Giza. I'm going to say yeah, true, because you wouldn't ask otherwise. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. Yeah, so she died in 30 BCE, and the pyramids at Giza were built between 2600 and 2500. That's crazy. Whoa. 30 BC. Did Jesus ever visit? Uh, like, I know he came to uh, Salt Lake City uh, for a bit, right? Did he ever go down and say, what's up, Cleopatra? Jesus in the house. Jesus. <laughs> well, hold on, I have a question. So well, I had one too. We had a, <laughs> I have a real question. No, but Jesus the, talk. Um, but the, uh, the, how long was the Egyptian ancient, how long did the, so how long did it last? The Egyptian Empire or whatever? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, that's, a, that's a great question. My question was silly. Yeah. Uh, how, how long is that bit? <laughs> <laughs> I should, we should know <laughs> since we talked about it today. It kind of depends Why? on how you, how you count it. I think the this this person, Narmer, who we think is probably, the first, if we're talking about like it, Egypt as like a state, like once it's kind of under one sort of like king and functioning as like one kind of united like society, it, it lasts from about 3100 BCE, maybe 3200 um, through, if you start at the Roman period, then it's through um, 30 BCE, and then it's part of the Roman Empire. Mm. Um, or you you could stop it a little bit earlier because there's a whole dynasty of, of people called the Ptolemies. Cleopatra is one of them. That's like 332 BCE, but it's about 3000 years. And then if you if you count the Roman period, then it's like an extra couple hundred years. Okay, so just a couple of quick questions. Who was the first pharaoh? We think it's a person we call Narmer. Narmer, no, okay. And who was the one that you got the most out of? Not like Tut, but who was the most revered of all the pharaohs that put his biggest, or he or she put their biggest foot stamp on Egyptian culture? I would say, like, especially thinking about how we think of Egyptian culture, it could be Ramses too, who had just a ton of monuments, including some that were built by other kings, but he put his name on them after they were built, which was actually like a fine, like totally normal thing to do if you were a king. So he would be uh, top of my list. Maybe in terms of impact on like modern culture, you could say Tutankhamun, but in his own time, he wouldn't have been. I think Ramses too, also known as Ramses the Great, lived a really long time, had tons of monuments, pretty big impact. And uh, what did they do for entertainment? in ancient Egypt? I almost asked you this question, actually. <laughs> so um, some things similar to what we did. So um, they had board games, for example. Oh, yeah. There's a board game called Senet that we we know like how it was played. And there's like real examples from archaeological excavations of Senate board games, which is pretty cool. I'll be the thimble, um, you be the race car. <laughs> <laughs> it, you should check it out. You should check it out. It's kind of like a grid board. I don't actually know how to play it, but I know that it is known as mm. played. Um, you know, they would go hunting or fishing and um, there's like poetry and there's music and there's parties and people got drunk and all these things. So kind of the, the same sort of things that we do. To entertain ourselves. A lot of wanking. Yeah. Not with all that sand and, <laughs> and no circumcision, you'd had a real problem, you would. <laughs> all right, Jen, thank you for being here. Uh, again, you can go to harvardartmuseums.org and you can find information about the Harvard Art Museums. You can also check out the activity book that uh, Jen wrote for kids. It's a, a, a coloring book, right? Or coloring agent Egypt. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like there's some coloring in there. There's some like um, some other stuff. Something about a bird mummy. Pretty cool. There you go. And then if you ever want to, uh, the talks, I forgot. Yeah, that. Skype a scientist. Skype a scientist. Yeah. You can find John there. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. 
Uh, thank you for being on the podcast. Uh, we learn a lot about Egypt today. If you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, uh, King Tut was the most important of all the pharaohs, go, that's me tutting noise. I uh, don't know about that and walk away. Good night, Australia. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.